A big warm welcome to you all from uh, myself, Lucy Medlicott. I am the director of the Irish Street Arts Circus and Spectacle Network, of which um, you are all members, new and not so new, I see. Uh, so the new ones, I'm looking forward to meeting you all soon um, and having more chats. And we are the, the an Irish network developed to specifically support, develop, and encourage uh, the development of street arts, circus, and spectacle. Um, and today's conversation is top tips for making art for online. And obviously, this is a very topical subject, as we've all kind of wrestled and grappled with, you know, not having live audiences and having digital audiences. So while I was having a conversation with Khan in the National Circus Festival of Ireland, um, uh, he suggested that as part of our offering for the Circus Festival this year, that we would uh, focus on this topic specifically. So usually together, Isaacs, with, together with the Circus Festival, we do a kind of a, a members only chat room in the bottom of the Kerry County Museum. And we have a lovely conversation together and we share our ideas and thoughts. But this year it's um, obviously slightly different. So this was uh, the conversation we had together, Khan and myself. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Khan, who's going to welcome you all. So over to you, Khan. Thank you very much, Lucy, and hello, everybody. Uh, yeah, this is, um, my name is Con Horgan, and I am the director of the National Circus Festival of Ireland. And uh, this is our 19th year. And uh, just to start, just to say that we very much miss you all. <laughs> it would have been lovely to host you as, as usual in, in Kerry for four days of the festival. Um, obviously that's not possible now. So it, it is great that we are actually marking it and uh, meeting you all, even though it's digitally. Um, but yeah, we, we, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the program uh, for this year. Um, just in case anyone doesn't know it, all the information for our program this year, which is an online festival this year, is available on our website, which is circusfestival.ie. And do check it out because there's some really lovely offerings this year um, with, with Isaacs, obviously this one. Um, and then tomorrow we have, over the weekend, we have six specially commissioned films um, from six different companies. It's super nice work. Um, we also have workshops going on. Now a lot of those, um, due to the caliber of the workshop, are sold out. But there are some places left on... Um, Gracie May Marshall's Hula Hoop Workshop, but the other ones are completely sold out, the handstand workshops, beginner and intermediate, and the Gandini juggling workshop as well. So it's really heartening to see that amount of interest and that amount of um, desire for training opportunities, which is great. <clears throat> and it was really nice to offer them as well. Um, what else? We, yeah, just to talk a little bit about the festival this year, we, we really, we really tried our best to, um, we really held out as long as we could to make a live festival happen. Um, we, we actually held out until the end of October and the start of the new, um, the most recent lockdown in Ireland, which was really kind of the, the signal that it wasn't really gonna be possible this year. But we had figured it out up until that point, we were gonna do a live festival walkabout acts. And uh, that way at least bring live art to the population of, of Tralee and surrounds. But the more we kind of went into it, it became more and more obvious as the year went on that that wasn't going to be an opportunity. So as the year went on, uh, like our minds were changing as much as the, the, as, as the scenario went on, because I'd have to admit that initially I was a little bit um, wary of online, online presentation. But as the year went on, it was really a lovely journey to, to discover the positives of it. And I think that with the offering we have this weekend, that it really, it's kind of a nice showcase for what is possible. Um, and it's been a joy to be surprised actually um, by the possibilities of online presentation. Uh, and it's been something that I, that I just didn't see coming, you know, because there's, it's not just the, the presentation, it's the audience reach is phenomenal. Like we've had lots of messages now. Um, Kim has been doing our um, 
social media and she's been doing a stellar job at that and we've had like people from all over the world looking forward to to tuning in like brazilians like it's amazing um, and th those audiences we would never have obviously we'd never have reached with a, a festival in Kerry so it's just it's just amazing to see that and um, just to finish up because I, I'm not going to keep this there's a lot of good stuff um, that's to come but the the other thing that was really really lovely was the when we did announce the details of the online festival there was so much positive feedback from both the community like the, the sector, uh, Circus Street Art and Spectacle, but also the, the public. And there was such a desire and such delight and such, uh, such joy that we were actually bringing a, a program that people would actually enjoy. And that's something, again, that I didn't see coming, you know? So that gave me a lot of hope. And uh, it's just nice to bring a little bit of hope and a little bit of, uh, little bit of quality art into people's lives. Um, so yeah, do tune in, um, do see it. We would love you to see it. Um, we put a lot of thought into it and a lot of passion. So we're delighted. So I am happy to say that the 19th edition of the Circus Festival of Ireland is now officially open. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Con. Wow. Um, I mean, I wasn't expecting to have the official launch in this soon, but here we go. <laughs> um, this festival is always full of surprises. That's one thing for sure. Um, and it's so fantastic to hear you talking about how the sector has really taken up the workshops and the interest in it has really boomed, even though you could only make the decision at the last minute. For me, it really is a testimony to the growth of the sector in the last couple of years, uh, particularly in circus and street arts. It's just boomed. And I think it's with uh, festivals like yours and artists like yourself and the artists um, that are part of this network that are all making that happen. And huge thanks to the Arts Council of Ireland for continuing to invest and support this sector, which massively uh, needs it and supports both Isaacs and the National Circus Festival of Ireland. So big up and more please, and let's keep going. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I now would like to introduce you to Mary Witcherly. Mary is a choreographer and dancer based in the Limerick region and uh, has found herself making, I don't know what you call it now, screen dance, film, screen dance, film, movie things. So Mary will give us the right word, but it involves screens and it involves dance and it involves art. And that's why we invited her to come and speak to us about her way of working. So Mary. Thanks, Lucy. Hi, everyone. Um, just a big thank you again to Khan and Kim and Lucy for the invitation to come and speak today. And lovely to hear your introduction, Khan, and you're really recognizing some of those kind of excitements and benefits of putting work online and the kind of opening of doors that it brings. Um, and also, of course, all the inherent challenges. So I think, you know, I've kind of touched on all those myself as an artist and um, it's just lovely to kind of share that now in, in, in this context as well with you all as an artist, but also as we all grapple with not only how we make work, but how we present work and how that impacts, you know, how we make now. So yeah, thank you and congratulations and um, uh, uh, good luck with the uh, ongoing festival and everything. So look, I just, I'll introduce myself. Um, uh, some of you may know me and um, as Lucy said, I kind of come from a dance background, work as a choreographer and a performer and filmmaker. And um, uh, I guess, you know, the, the kind of origination of my practice really comes from dance. Uh, I kind of, you know, grew up working in dance and um, uh, moved into contemporary dance in my kind of mid twenties when I kind of realized, oh, you can do dance as a career, you know, having done it mainly as a hobby when I was young. Um, and uh, so my kind of practice in contemporary dance is, has been, you know, evolving, I guess, kind of in a way as a, a late career thing, which kind of happens sometimes in, in, in Ireland because, you know, it's, it's, it's new in some ways that a, a, a kind of professional practice 
practice and dance uh, can come a reality. So certainly when I was kind of beginning my journey as an artist, um, it didn't feel like a reality. So it, it took me uh, time to find my feet there. And um, so, but that has kind of, I think in some ways come as a kind of an, a, an advantage to my work because I've, I've found over the years that my, uh, my work as a dance artist has, uh, has sort of had legs that has taken it into lots of different directions um, because maybe um, my kind of early experiences or training weren't very fixed into a particular identity. So I often find now that my identity as an artist is very fluid and I work um, in many different contexts. And it's that kind of questioning, in fact, that brought me to film, you know, over 10 or 12 years ago. Um, so that fluidity, I think, is something that's really kind of important in, in, in my work and has brought me to different contexts, including film, including gallery contexts um, and multi-screen installation or cinematic context. So I really context and how uh, what, what, what context my work might uh, um, be shown in uh, actually is uh, kind of very tied in with the with the work that I make. So often I'm thinking about what environment the work needs in in order to um, uh, think about the work that gets made. So I kind of just briefly show you some examples of the work that I've made to just give you a little insight into um, to just help understand maybe a little about the work and then I'll talk a bit more specifically about the film. So I'm just going to do a little screen share um, uh, to just show you something for a second. So just bear with me one moment while I click a button. Um, so here we are and this one, okay. So let me just, uh, that should probably go full screen first, maybe. Oops. Sorry now, here we are. There we go. So now you should have this um, uh, here and I'll just take it back to the beginning. So these are just a quick series of images just to give you a little overview of the different kinds of work. So here's a piece in 2008 in Visible Histories, which was a work made specifically for a gallery context. And I worked with a sculptor and live performed myself um, and a sound artist. And that piece specifically needed gallery. And so the work kind of emerged in that way. And it was a, a live performance piece. Um, here is some of the sculptures by Rory Tagney, the visual artist, and it uh, toured to different galleries or, or, around the country. The ne next work, just another example, this is an earlier work from 2011, which is a three screen uh, um, film installation. So this uh, uh, again was uh, made with gallery in mind because of the multi screen. And the multi-screen kind of question in this context was really looking at choreography, like how can we think about choreography happening across multiple screens? So it was again, bringing the kind of uh, dance practice into um, a screen context. And of course, multi-screen and the potential of that kind of an installation context coming from gallery really opened a door for how I could think about the dance side of uh, uh, um, the element. So it's a three screen work that looked at um, the movement or the dance that we have kind of inherent in our manual crafts and traditions in Ireland. So uh, I won't go into huge detail about that, but just more to look at the kind of different contexts. This is the, the three screen work. Here's another a, a dual screen work, which again was uh, for a kind of um, gallery setting with also an installation. This was a collaboration with Mary Noonan and Monica Spencer and uh, Jürgen Simpson, um, which uh, worked with a group of 50 women here in the Limerick region. And again, it was uh, shot as a film, but not as a single screen, specifically as a dual screen, again, to sort of work with this idea of choreography across multiple screens. So the multi-screen idea is something which has been very important for me in my own work and um, has really uh, kind of come in by being able to really look at context outside of dance, in fact, and to be able to say, okay, what does the visual arts, how does, how does the visual arts or a gallery context allow me to kind of push my choreographic practice uh, beyond 
what I uh, uh, what it is or what I know of it as a dancer. So I, I always love to find ways to keep pushing the kind of boundaries of where I situate my work. Um, and that's an, another example of that. Um, just the other side of the page there, In the Bell's Shadow was a feature. It was the first feature film I made, the only feature film. <laughs> I might make another one, but um, at, the, at the moment, it's the only feature film I've made. And it was a dance film, a feature length dance film. Um, uh, uh, is you know not without its challenges because we all like you know narrative kind of dialogue that we can kind of follow through so it was kind of a very large scale work um, which uh, I collaborated on with Joan Davis. Joan who some of you know being um, you know an early pioneer of contemporary dance in Ireland and works uh, in incredibly um, kind of um, uh, well uh, hugely outdoors, let's say, uh, in her practice. So this is something that has, has been long part of her practice, but in fact, a way that many of us are now beginning to get curious and having to work in an outdoor context and Joan's work would have worked in this way for a long time. And, um, and uh, this uh, feature film is just another example of the kind of format or the way that, uh, uh, that the work can unfold. Again, I won't go into detail about the work specifically because I think it's not kind of entirely relevant to this uh, context or time. And then just a final example on this document in this sheet here is um, Sinter, which was a 2008 piece of live performance and video. So again, it's kind of trying to kind of embrace a more installation context. So where multi screens are set up and maybe the audience are uh, not in the kind of tiered seating, the stage setting, but they're kind of inhabiting the stage space uh, with the performance uh, and the space is kind of delineated by screens and um, um, and performance and sound in different ways. So um, I guess that's just, we'll give you just some visuals and, and context uh, um, for now. I'll just stop my screen share uh, for a moment and just come back. Um, oops, let me, yeah, just come back uh, this for, for, for a moment without my screen share. So I guess the thing that is kind of in showing, you know, showing those kind of diversity of things is really um, to kind of highlight this question of context, because I think now even more than ever, context is really um, important because we begin to think about the context. I know in this um, uh, kind of with your th theme on this uh, also around the festival, but the context of the online. And, um, uh, you know, this is a very specific context, the online context, and how do we, uh, you know, what kind of questions are we asking now in terms of translating, uh, you know, either our identity as artists or the kind of work that we make to this online context, and how can we, um, you know, how, how, do the questions shift? Like, do we have to ask different questions about ourselves as artists? Or are we, you know, or can we translate what we already do to new contexts? So I think um, we have to, there's a bit of a shift really in terms of how we have to continually kind of uh, negotiate that I think um, in some ways I've found that as part, I guess what I'm, I'm kind of articulating is that um, I found that as part of my practice all along, like this constant kind of orientation of um, curiosities about different contexts and how that can kind of shape the work in interesting ways. So this kind of hybrid nature, I think, has uh, always been part of my work. Um, so I guess, um, you know, just a, I, just let me just jump a little back because I think Lucy, it might, we talked as well earlier about just how does one arrive into kind of, you know, working in contexts outside of what we become kind of established in like dance practice and the contexts that we know that that kind of unfolds in. And I think in my own kind of my own story or my own narrative in a way is that, you know, it, it's sometimes accidental. And I think I was working, you know, about 12 or 13 years ago in a performance piece and I was kind of I actually had an injury I ended up kind of struggling with a back injury which is not uncommon in dance of course and um, I sort of faced a bit of a challenge in terms of you know my practice and I realized that actually um, you know 
it's, it was possible that I wasn't really properly going to be able to perform again, or that's how it felt at that time. And so I kind of, you know, realized that, oh, how would I continue kind of asking the questions that I needed to ask as, a, as an artist? And I kind of, you know, just with a very simple curiosity and a naive technology at the time, just brought a camera into the studio. And all of a sudden, I sort of really found uh, the opportunity of what the camera did to the body um, just opened a door. And at that stage, I had never used a camera. I had never used a, I mean, hardly used a computer. I know we're not talking about 100 years ago, but this tells you how fast things have shifted and how, you know, we're kind of catching up even with technology. I, I'm not, I'm not my own there to say that, you know, it's not, it wasn't unusual for people you know, I mean, the iPhone is only around what 10 or 11 years or something like. So the, the pace, the speed at which things have picked up is kind of immense. So we've we've made a huge project pr progress. I always find that kind of fascinating. But that, yeah, so just that kind of simplicity sometimes of curiosity and actually seeing, oh my gosh, you know, when you frame the body, something else completely happens and uh, at the time I was really fascinated by detail I still am uh, kind of really uh, I, I it's a big interest of mine in the work in my work and um, the, the lens just offered this huge opportunity to be able to see um, a multiplicities in the body that you know I, I hadn't experienced in, in in the live context so that was the kind of um, key really and then that then I realized once that kind of curiosity took hold I realized that um, now I had to go and understand about film mm. I, I, I had opened the door and I thought oh you know what's film about and that you know took me down uh, a, a long, you know, road of really understanding film and uh, film practice and, um, you know, all cinematography and um, sound relationship with film, uh, all its aesthetics and practicalities really, including um, editing, which I do, I edit um, my own works as well as sometimes getting other editors, which is a really important thing to do. But um, one of the big things for me was looking at editing because of its relationship, how I felt its relationship with choreography. So learning how to edit at that time was really important for me. So I kind of actually, funnily enough, parked what I would say my physical dance practice at the time and invested hugely in kind of understanding film um, because I felt I had to. Um, yeah, because I felt that was really necessary at that time. So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess, um, you know, I know um, when we think about this kind of idea of, um, you know, the top tips for online, um, I kind of, I, I, you know, I, I'm not sure really what the top tips are, because I think we're all kind of figuring out, because yes, the online context is, is quite different, and there's a lot of um, uh, variables um, in, 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 in how people view work online. I mean, we have to understand that online, like the internet has a kind of an incidental experience to it. Like sometimes we, you know, it's 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 a lot of browsing and you know moving, scanning kind of bite-sized information. And that incidental nature of the internet, I find challenging for my work as an artist. So I think, um, you know, top tips. I think the top tips are, you know, we have to keep asking questions about like what context suits my work and, um, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and to understand each context. And I think we're all coming to really understand the online context more and more um, because, uh, because we have to, for sure. Um, and I, I guess one whether it's online or um, or making work for a screen, whether that's the cinema screen or the gallery screen or the online screen. Um, I think some of the key moments, I guess, for myself has been, you know, to really recognize the crucial difference between making work for stage 
and making work for screen. Um, and that was one of, you know, just again, kind of key moment in, in, in my own kind of inquiry over the years was to kind of really come to terms with what that is, because um, so that I could really embrace the medium of film, because once we're working with screen, we are working with the medium of film. And so that uh, attention to that um, uh, is, is really um, uh, fundamental. And I guess the other kind of key moment or you know, I don't know, top tip maybe, is kind of, again, understanding um, for myself was kind of the flatness of the screen. Like it's, you know, it's two dimensional, it is a flat surface and what we work with in dance and live uh, uh, performances of any kind really is the kind of dimensionality of the body and the dimensionality of space and you know how 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 that navigating across a stage and all those kind of uh, elements of of space and you know all of a sudden you know screen space is flat so i kind of really was another moment of really kind of excitement and curiosity in my practice like how do i deal with that like that's a brilliant challenge you know uh, and, and and it's been an ongoing challenge in terms of how to work with that in dance for for making dance film for me that Thank kind you, of Th uh, thanks lucy yeah. five minutes well we're, we're just nearly wrapping up now okay okay brilliant brilliant okay. thanks lucy okay so i'll just do another key 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 moment or two I've, I've said a lot about this in a way in terms of context like what's your frame of reference i have to keep asking myself you know is it for cinema or is it video art or is it video for stage because all those things um, mean that the work kind of shifts in in very 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 different ways, and um, I guess two two final things uh, that become really relevant in terms of the dance film side of things um, that I would like you know locations have meaning, and I, I know that's kind of obvious in a way, but um, I see a lot of films uh, through the festival that I run here in Limerick as well. And sometimes the kind of disjunct between the performance that's happening and the location that's chosen is um, is is really huge. Um, and that's something that I always kind of uh, like to kind of deal with as well. And, you know, a final, I don't know what to call it, top tip, maybe Lucy, I'll go with to close. Um, you know, music is not the same as sound. And in, in any kind of um, screen context, um, I actually, and, and the body, I actually am more and more thinking that actually how to work with the kind of fullness of the body is through a very careful attention uh, to sound. And that's really kind of exciting me at the moment in terms of how to really let works be very full in their, um, in their uh, screen kind of contexts. Wow. So I, I hope, I'm, I, I mean, there's, a, there's always a lot to talk about. And I think also because my practice goes in so many different directions, I never know which avenue I can go down and in these kind of contexts, because I, I can, you know, maybe go down too many contexts. Yeah, but that's uh, but I, I hope now that's maybe opened a door and I'm sure questions will be really helpful to kind of, you know, tie those things together for you, for everybody. No, it's great. And, and in fact, because our artists are so diverse from street, circus, spectacle and the format and the context and the mediums that we use are so completely uh, uh original and different and no two are the same it's great to actually hear that diversity within your own practice and the working outdoors as well i think will resonate with a lot of people in this room here today so um no and i love your top tips list i'm sure there's more but <laughs> thank you um just uh for everybody please if you have questions just to keep things moving a little bit just pop them in the chat box so we can come back to them afterwards because now i'm going to jump straight to joe mangan and um so rather than we asking Mary questions now and we all get stuck, we'll just go straight to Joe Mangan and then we'll ask questions for everyone together. Uh, so, so do write down your questions or pop them in the chat so we can come back to them after because we want to have a lively conversation. Um, so I'd like to now introduce you to Joe Mangan. Joe Mangan is a bit of a legend, uh, artist, theatre maker, practitioner, uh, performance corporation, festival director, digital champion, Carlo Arts Festival, you name it, uh, she's done it. So I 
really want to invite Joe Mangan to speak from the view of the festival programmer who's looking at this challenging environment. How do they put together um, a festival in this context and what is it that they're looking for if it all has to be online? What are those key, key things that interest them? So over to you, Joe Mangan, wherever you are. Thanks a million, Lucy. How are you? And thanks for having me here. And thanks for making me feel ancient. Uh, we haven't done loads of things, but yeah, I suppose not. Not unlike Mary, kind of head in in lots of different uh, lots of different areas at lots of different uh, simultaneously, simultaneously. But it's sure it's very exciting, even these days. Um, so in terms of just getting straight to the point of what um, with my Carlo Arts Festival hat on, we we're looking for in terms of programming. Uh, actually, it's not specifically online. I'm, I feel like we were all, and notwithstanding the fact that you have now uh, last minute embraced it, Con, uh, and I'm sure it's not last minute, but that I, I have difficulty with it, frankly. I've difficulty with the difficulty with the online format. I, 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 it just breaks my heart looking at work online. This is the truth. I may, I've been making work online. I, I've had two gigs recently, one with Irish National Opera, making five films for them and uh, did a piece for the Abbey recently with the wonderful Katrina um, Ennis in Croke Park. And whilst I enjoyed the process of doing it myself, would I sit down and watch them? I don't think I would, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I, my, my, my inbox is full every day of opportunities to watch all sorts of things from all sorts of festivals all over the place so I for me what and I think we were really lucky in Carlo in that we were well lucky god we were one of the first festivals that had to cancel and we had to go online so there was some interest for sure in what we did online we had 170,000 people view our our stream that went out um late and I can talk to you about all of the uh heart stopping moments when you're sitting waiting for a live broadcast that involves people from Argentina all the way to Austria via a bloke in London who you've never met who's going to actually get it up online for you and, and how terrifying that is if anyone wants to talk about that there's no no issues but I feel like we we all as as practitioners over the course of the last six or seven or eight or 19 years or however long it's been have offered our work online as a bam and a comfort for others as well as engaging in our practice but it has limitations and downsides for sure um we are all uh, you will i'm sure you're not all just having fabulous times bouncing up and down and stretching all day long i'm sure you have been sucked into this uh vortex of applications and admin and are spending most of your time in front of the screen so why in god's name would you want to spend more time in front of the screen that's the challenge so it has to be like we were lucky we got away with some stuff back in june that you wouldn't get away with anymore the rough and readiness uh you know we we had some beautiful slick work but we also had some rough and ready stuff and i think you can make choices do you want it rough and ready and cost effective or do you want it slick and another question do you want to give all your money to usually blokes sorry with big cameras that's because that's what's happening at the moment and that's a, that's a worry for me for the for the for not just this sector but for the entirety of the arts so it has to be quite special to draw my personal attention online, to bother giving up the tiny bit of free time I have to engage with something on the same screen I've been looking at all day long. So for me, it's about it's about that. I don't know how to describe it really, but it's 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 kind of about added value. It's about trying to make your work feel digitally native. So it's not here's a piece of work I really wanted to do. In a particular place and I'm going to film it and you're going to have to watch it on your telly or your computer. I don't think that cuts it, that's the truth of it. I think you have to really consider storyboarding what you're going to do if you're going to do it online. I think you really have to consider camera movements. I think you have to do a little bit of YouTube tutorials and find out a little bit about cinematography, about lighting, if you're going to shoot it yourself or you have to enlist the help of somebody who who has probably got decades of experience of this so none of us are going to become experts overnight at how to do all things but but you can i think you can learn a lot about the basics if you just dig into it and um and and upskill on your computer as much as possible um I, I will say that uh, Mary is absolutely right about like attention span. We all know it. 
or flick, flick, scroll, scroll, what's going to hold your attention? So I made the choice back in June for the festival that we did, which was pretty much all online with some digitally native stuff that we were going to have nothing longer than five minutes. And even at that, that felt quite long and it was quite long. But I note even still that there are organizations such as the Abbey that I did a piece for last week that were putting out 14 minute long pieces and not just one 14 minute long pieces, but 14, 14 minute long pieces and expecting people to sit down and watch them for three and a half hours of their life. The only people watching that stuff, I can tell you, are the people who are making it or their mammies and daddies and their bestest friends. You know, that's that's the reality. You have to think about how if you want this, if you want whatever you are doing in this format to have an impact beyond your immediate circle, then it's it's got to be something quite unique. So there are there are there are people making interesting work that is, I suppose I've got, I have a particular graw for or love in uh, uh, the Irish uh, translation um, for recently, and I'm a total, I was a total charlatan in this realm a few years ago, because I was just like, I really fancy this kind of work. Can I pretend I know something about it and get involved? Yes, you can. So 360, three-dimensional headset work, or even 360 work that you can see on a screen, for me, has got a different appeal. And that's something that I'm exploring a good bit in my own work. But uh, I'm going to share with you a couple of little pieces, bearing in mind now, uh, what are we now? I can't remember, six, seven months ago. This is six or seven months ago. But there were still beautiful pieces that we commissioned for Carlo Arts Festival and put out online. One of them was um, by uh, Christina Zanauer, who I'd worked with with Fidget Feet, actually, um, uh, in, when I directed a piece called Bingo Wings for them last year. She's from Austria. And herself and her partner, Sam Lech, made this beautiful film. It was just from hanging around on Facebook. I spotted that they were making beautiful films with great cinematography, so commissioned her to make a specific one. So I'm going to share my screen here and hopefully you can have a quick look at that. Do, do, do. Uh, Lucy, give me a thumbs up if that's working. Working. Five minutes long because that's what we said we do um but it was beautifully shot and i had noted that she had work online that was really beautifully shot and that's why i approached her and um and they did make this really beautiful piece and um i was really really thrilled with that there was another company then that we had um worked with or uh, no i hadn't worked with i'd hoped to bring to carlo um in 20 what was that year 2020 <laughs> particular wonderful year so I'm, and they were from argentina so they're a dance company this amazing choreographer called josefina gorostina probably pronounce that terribly and so we had great ambitions for this piece um i'll, I'll play a wee bit of it and then i'll tell you what happened okay let me know if this one's working <laughs> Soy Josefina Gorostiza. Soy bailarina, coreógrafa, directora, monotributista, docente, dan. 
danza siempre. Pero siempre en la escena alternativa, ese espacio que no sabemos muy bien qué es, donde no hay plata para producción y que por eso llamamos independiente, aunque es totalmente dependiente de nosotros mismos y de algunas otras cositas también. Fui asistente de dirección, productora, gestora, performer, plomo, sonidista, performer, asistente de iluminación, técnica de obras, performer, administrativa, performer, armadora de carpetas, vedora, contenedora, Estoy bailando sin parar hace más de 70 días desde que en mi país, Argentina, se declaró la cuarentena obligatoria y me quedé sin ningún tipo de ingresos. Pero estoy subiendo un video a Instagram por día. Hace poco alguien me hizo esta pregunta. ¿No parar es un síntoma producido por el capitalismo o no parar es resistir? Me obsesiona el tiempo, sobre todo aquel que sospechosamente hemos dado en llamar libre. ¿Es esto tiempo libre? Pero di la cuenta de la cantidad de horas que trabajo por día. Es una mezcla. I think we can all uh, relate to that at the moment, how many bloody hours a day we're all working. Uh, so that was that was a beautiful piece that I had seen a kind of work in progress of um, early last year and had great plans to get over to Ireland, uh, but worked with them on trying to kind of do a super small version of it that would, because I was really conscious of the kind of precariousness of the, of the art sector and the gig economy in general around then. Well, I always have been, but, In Argentina, it's something else, like it's something else. So um, like I was at this international festival where none of the performers were being paid. None of the, all of the bloody international presenters were being put up, but none of the performers were being paid. And it was this big all bells, all whistles festival. And it was just, I was just staggered by it. And this was quite a provocative political act of this um, amazing young choreographer to, to put on this piece that, were, that named it. And as you go through the piece, it, it names it. It's brilliant, Joe. Two minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh, Christ. Get on the point. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I guess uh, I guess what I kind of wanted to say is that um, that there's great successes to be had by doing stuff online. But I think you need to think about it in the round in as many ways as you possibly can. And think about are there ways to kind of interact with your audience in, a, in any kind of physical way? as well as having this sort of online existence. Is there any way to create a piece that maybe engages with people in their homes? One of the things we did this year was we sent um, uh, really cheap VR headsets, goggles to people's houses, made of cardboard and people were able to see work in their headsets. So it doesn't always have to be just the online screen. There's, there's other options. There's, if, you're, if you're in any way into 360 or 3D and you can get yourself a wee cardboard headset, you can do all space events where you can actually get yourself an avatar and you can make work or you can present work or you can see work in that kind of crazy realm. But um, Yeah, there's a lot, I've lot, if anyone wants to know about what didn't work, I mean, I, in particular with that, what our plans were, there was green screens, those poor feckers were locked up in their apartments, not able to get out to get the cable, they weren't even allowed back into the theatres in which they would work to get their hands on them. So it was like the, the, the heart attacks and the headaches uh, that went into making that happen were astonishing. We also had Irish sign language throughout all our pieces and we had a little signer in the corner uh, who was live signing. We were broadcasting that and look at lightning hit our broadcaster on the day of the of the of the online like the whole system went down just after our tech and had to be reset like it's like li it's like live you know it's like live all sorts of shit can go wrong and it does but You know, that's good, I guess. <laughs> well, that's a good way to end. Thank you so much, Joe. Oh, my God. We have so much to talk about and we're only just getting stuck in. Uh, uh, oh, my God. Um, sorry, now I'm rushing you. Uh, so I see there's a few comments in the, the conversations. People are loving your honesty, the blokes with big cameras. Um, yeah, I totally hear you about the, the 14 minutes for the bloody Sunday. Bloody Sunday is right. Um, I, I watched, I watched five of them though, but just out of because I felt ob obligated. Did um, you watch mine, Lucy? I did. That was the best one, Joe. That's all I wanted to hear. Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> 
Um, so I'd like to throw it out to the floor there. Um, and I see a couple of hands being raised. Kim McCafferty. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Lucy. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Mary. That was great. Hello, everyone. My name is Kim McCafferty, and I also work with the National Circus Festival in Ireland Con. I am creative producer. And yes, that is a title I made up myself. Um, every role and structure needs to professionalize with titles. And so I made one to cover all of the jobs that I do. Creative producer, feel free to put that on your CV too. Um, I, this year I'm a live performer, uh, street arts mostly, but I started my working life in film. Uh, where there were 150 to 300 people on set every day. And if one of them got a cold, the entire thing ground to a halt. It was wonderful and glorious. Um, and so this year, to go from uh, live street arts and touring around the world to having to make a film with one friend who happens to be a cameraman and uh, another artist who I always wanted to work with, uh, well, it showed quite the difference. And I would say that um, much like Josefina from Argentina. I was also every role. And I think that that's something really important in top tips, being a broader conversation. And um, like Josefina, I had to, we were filming um, a commission. We were asked to make work for online for Culture Night on an island. I went, I drove around the country and collected kayaks. And then um, one of the artists said they didn't like to kayak. I had to work, so I got in a boat with an outboard engine, which I didn't know how to drive, and repeatedly crashed into the island and trees for an hour on our first morning. So I would suggest that if you are commissioned to make online work or feel like making a video, you have two choices. One, get funding and get an expert, horses for courses. A sound expert, it only needs one person, and a film expert, a camera person. That's two experts. If you need extra funding, look, be clever. We, um, we were given 4,000 euro to make this. We were asked, it wasn't not even close to enough. And my friend said, oh, but you're kind of in the heritage area because so we were working on this very historical 13th century castle. So ring the heritage office. I rang the heritage office. I said, how much would you spend on tourism videos, for example? And she didn't answer. And I said, well, can you support this project? An extra thousand euro. So be smart if you need, if you go for that option of choosing professionals, be smart. Who else are you giving video content? Now, I never gave it to the heritage office. I didn't give it to the grant council, but in the day that it went out, when it finally got out, they were tagged. So do if you need that. Or your second option, gorilla. Just fucking do it. You know, if it's you or your friend on the camera, then do it like Joe said, there are slapstick work. And that can be beautiful. But then I would wonder, my big question is, can work that is made to be live ever work online? I would suggest no. We're now being asked to record our shows. Oh, can you record our shows? We have some funding left and we'll, we'll send it out in a private link to our festival or to our websites um, or our theatre. But we have to remake the show. We're not going to do the show and film the show. It looks shit, absolutely crap. And even the greatest cameraman in the world is still not going to transform and transpose our live street theater show, which engages with the audience completely into something that looks good on camera. So we have to remake the show. So if somebody approaches you and says, oh, would you film your show for us? We've got a quid left over this year. Bear in mind that you will have to rework it and remake it because it doesn't work and you could be doing yourself a great disservice. And finally, um, I would wonder, uh, is it not our role? I don't want to, diminish the entire existence and reason for this Zoom talk this morning, but is it not our role to push for live art that we should be doing it? Now, I value, I don't want to be a, a Philistine. Obviously, if you say, oh, I don't want to go online, you'll be, you know, you'll say, oh, you're going against the grain, you've got to move forward. And it is a wonderful opportunity. It's great for some people, but to suggest that we all need to learn it and do it, when maybe what we all need to do is say, actually, no, you need to allow us back out in the streets or back in the theatres or back in the public space for live performance. I think that is what we need to be putting our effort into. Yeah, well, that's really interesting, Kim, because that's going back to what Mary was saying about why, what was the impetus between her deciding to take up the camera? There has to be a reason why you want to do it, is it? Would you agree, Mary? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think I think we have we have to know why, you know, otherwise we're just trying to, you know, transform something for the sake of it. I think we need to, you know, like, why would I put it online? And or, you know, why would I put it in a gallery or, you know, what does it need? And I know there is a kind of a, you know, the sense, uh, look, I think we're all troubled with this sense of visibility. Like if we, you know, we have to stay visible or something, you know, and that kind of maybe forces us online, but we just, I guess we need to also just take stock and say, when is it, when is it right? And when is it not? And I think mm -hmm. like Joe, I completely like finding ways that make, make it work. Like that's, I mean, those works, those examples, Joe are great. And the second one, particularly just like, it's really using ways that it can, you know, still feel uh, very artistically uh, relevant in what it's doing as opposed to a documentation of something you know that's that's a different thing like you know it's it's entirely a different thing but I think yeah yeah so, and actually that, that piece was like when I saw it live it was three or four people on computers uh, controlling what we were seeing on a screen in the background uh, Josefina dancing and the the actor talking on a microphone so they so that was a that was a massive pivot for them to change that into what what they made just on your point kim i think uh, i think you're absolutely right and if i wake up another bloody morning and hear publicans on the on the radio like that's the most important thing to all of us on our well-being and our feckin lives it's just just it's it's just staggering isn't it it's like mm -hmm. I, I go around shaking my head and banging my fist and my other half uh, has to put up with me but uh it, it, like and as he says you know publicans are our tds publicans are our counselors these are the decision makers you know so of course they're going to get heard of course they're going to get heard we have to get heard we do have to get heard i see ken there is is jumping around ken fanning <laughs> where are you ken we can't hear you, Ken. I have to unmute myself. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm jumping around because I really want to go to the toilet because I drank coffee about 10 minutes before we started this thing. And now I'm like, my bladder is full. Yeah, we don't need to know that. Just okay, gets well. the point. <laughs> I think I, I just really like the whole thing of why we want to go online. Because I know a bunch of my mates were just like so fucking eager to get online with their stuff when we first locked down. And, you know, there was a tsunami of people putting their stuff online. And, um, you know, and it kind of like, I, I know it's some of my friends who I feel like had lots of issues with their mental health and stuff, you know, really, you know, jumped online as some sort of like life raft. And, um, and as we all know, like this is, this is a mental health crisis on the horizon is going to be awful. We just had a tragic thing happen here in Belfast with one of our community, you know, and, um, so, you know, thinking about why you go online and, and the, you know, the stuff you put up is a really interesting question on why people are doing it. But I would, I, I would kind of like to give you some, some tips. So uh, people who don't know me, uh, my name's Ken. Uh, as well as been a, I'm a circus performer, but I've actually been a filmmaker since I was 16. I've done lots of filming and I've, um, I've made four feature length films and, uh, and I've you know, won some awards and stuff like that for my filmmaking. And um, but I wanted to give tips. Um, one of my top tips is like just make stuff. You know, your camera on your phone is fucking amazing, and you can edit stuff on your computer. It's so easy, you know. Just do, 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 do. Make, make, make. And if you go to my YouTube channel, no one goes to my YouTube channel. But like, you know, um, uh, there's all my stuff there, and lots of it is terrible. But I just put it up. I put it up. Put it up because I don't really care. Um, um, and um, I just like making, you know, I, for me, it's a very cathartic experience, just making shit. Uh, but top tips, like like uh, some of my films that I've just made recently, I made a film that was 47 minutes long, Joe Mangan, and over 6,000 people watched it. So somebody's fucking watching this shit. Um, uh, and I think the way it works is it's about making partnerships. See, we don't need Joe anymore. We don't need programmers anymore because, you know, you just make your partnerships with... Um, people on social media, your own community, and they will find you. There's 4 billion people online. All you need is a couple of thousand to fucking take notice of you and share yourself. And, you know, you, we, we don't need festivals. <laughs> we, of course we need festivals. We need live stuff. You know, yeah, live stuff is very, very different. You're not coming up next year, are you, Ken, no? Which <laughs> <laughs> isn't booking you either, Ken. <laughs> Okay, uh, okay, keep going. You're doing I, well. I, I kind of think 
A good thing to start looking into if you want to go online, if you're going online and considering your work, look at all the different things. You know, Facebook is one thing, but there's things like TikTok, there's Twitch, there's all these fucking mad little corners of the internet where people are doing crazy shit and, and just different stuff. And if you get on board with them early on or just get engaged with them and you'll find another community there who's willing to to interact with you and share your stuff. There's no money in this, by the way. There's absolutely no money, which is a whole nother issue as to why the hell you you pour so much resources and time into this to feed the fucking machine. You know, we're all feeding this uh, internet machine with all our our stuff. And I mean, that's terrible also. But there are some wonderful things in, in, in the internet. Like, you know, the, like Circus Talk is a great, you know, that community of circus people globally, like, and I link up with them. So I have people all over the world who, link up on my stuff with uh, technology make your own work find your global community four billion people online yeah film is a lot about technology i was interestingly i often think the circus and film have a lot of similarities and in the circus is also a lot about technology about rigging and stuff the latest rigging stuff and they make new things and film is a lot about technology i've just bought myself a 360 camera joe mangan so i'll be i'll be sharing some of that stuff with you soon <laughs> we can geek out <laughs> and uh yeah i kind of uh yeah that's that's mm. i just wanted to share tips you know I, I had loads of things i wanted to talk about you know like you know, especially about feeding the machine with our creativity and getting nothing back and how now the community, now people, consumers, you know, um, feel like art is for free now because we've been giving away our stuff for free. And I wonder after all this pandemic is over, you know, are we going to have a thing where people expect everything to be for free now and, uh, and, and are less willing to buy tickets maybe or they go I, out I, I, I hop in there Ken because I think actually please do I've talked too much no Thanks, you're Joe. fine it's, it's just I think that the, I think that there is a way to make a few quid from this stuff and it like obviously everyone we worked with in the festival was paid to make the work they were commissioned they're like festivals are dying for work at the moment they don't have the option to bring people in either from overseas if you're based in Ireland or you know so they so they have to invest the resources that have been invested in them in artists and um th there's uh, we just had a call out actually I hope some of you applied for it we've got we've got extra money we've got extra money this is nutty we've got extra money because we got wage subsidy scheme and which uh, which freed up money to to direct to artists so that's how Carlo Arts Fest has been able to run this wedge funds at the end of this year but also I'm, I'm involved in a thing that's going to be announced on the 15th of December so watch out for it it is a, it's a it's an arts council initiative um currently called wintering out it's going to be called something else and it's kind the idea is that it is going to be um opportunities for significant works to be funded that happen in various places around the country packaged up like as if it's a festival but it's not a festival it's going to it's it's a series of events but there's significant money available for it and i'm the digital consultant on that which means that i'll be helping them um the the the, the people who won the tender i'll be helping them kind of put together uh uh the call out for the digital stuff and for me the digital stuff isn't online but there is money there for that there's money for real work to happen in the real world and there's money for digital work to happen in the digital world and i think that's quite an exciting uh, change because I've been advocating for a while that our Arts Council in Ireland should have a digital strategy, should have, and this is way before COVID, should have a, a portal for people who work in a digital format to be able to access funds without being a dancer, an actor, you know what I mean, without being funneled into the hardcore silos. So I think there are opportunities now, and I think now's the time to hop on it because everyone's kind of in the in the place of going, oh, we're going to do live stuff, we're we going to do online stuff or digital stuff. And so most people, if they're being canny and they're programmers at the moment, are trying to pro are trying to program both. So I think there are opportunities now to get money to make that work. That's such fantastic news, Joe, um, to hear about the the wintering out, and I look forward to to chatting with you more about that. And I I can tell you that I reasonably confident you got a few responses from the the Isaacs membership for the wedge funds so um so hopefully fingers crossed that works out for some of you um Mary are you trying to come back in there I was just going to come in on that because I think it's it's great to hear that Joe and actually one one thing on that it's another kind of tip really that comes through is that sometimes it's really challenging in the arts council because of those silos you can imagine like for somebody like myself that works in many ways like I could present a work to the visual arts council 
context and they would understand it or film or dance. And yet it can present challenges because if I present a work to dance that has inherent film elements in it, then they pass it on to film. And unless I take all the criteria for film, then my project isn't successful. So you have to be very careful when you're applying because they pass these applications across the Arts Council, as we know, and it makes sense why they do that. But then if you don't have a really sophisticated film treatment, film might say, oh, this isn't this isn't a coherent film project, you know, whereas dance say, wow, this is a really exciting dance film work. So these kind of silos get really complicated complex also when you're applying for funding. So there's little strategies to get really uh, clever on, I think that's also, you know, have to be aware of. So Joe, you're bang on. I think this question about like, where's the, where, where's the kind of hybrid artists? Like where are they sitting in the Arts Council so they don't all actually get sidelined because it's not easy. You know, we, we like things that are compartmentalized because it's like, okay, great. Mary Witchley is a dancer, great, she does that. But what about if Mary Witchley's practice is so broad that she wants to do multiple things? Because we do that now as artists. And see, it's I look at your work, Mary, and I don't see you as a dancer. I see you as a street artist. <laughs> great, <laughs> that's my next project. <laughs> yeah, you really need a multidisciplinary department like, and, and have done for probably about two decades. See, and, and I think that, that that's the traditional institutional boxes are still with us, but the artists have changed. And the boxes don't really exist anymore, but we're all trying to put square pegs into round holes. And, and that's, a, that's an issue for me, all right. And that's an issue I think Isaacs and you, the membership, have been struggling with a little bit for a while. I wreck my head with it nearly every week trying to figure out what we fit, where we I, fit. I, I, I have a contribution. Um, it's about the online aspect and why go online. Um, <clears throat> I think what Ken was saying about well, just make, 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 it's really good, but it, it balance that with what do you want to get out of it? Most of the time we're looking to get paid, yeah? But at the moment, maybe that's not possible, but if you have a clear idea of what you're trying to get out. So I've created some videos for something with Firk and Crane, so I tried to go, okay, what, what do I want to get out of these videos? Learn about promotion. So I had to do like a, a storyboard a little bit going, what do I want to say in this little tiny video to promote it and to try and create images around it? Quite often, we all have to do that. So when we talk about creating stuff online at the moment, maybe you can go, what I'm trying to get out of it is understand how to create promotional material for myself from the ground up, because that will be applicable later. I'm not trying to go online, but as I develop those tools in the future, it will benefit my marketing. So I'm not getting, well, I am for the front crane one, but you know, it's like, if you have a clear idea of what you're going to get out of any kind of collaboration and you don't have to do it on your own, ask your friend to video it, maybe ask your friend to edit it. That's what I did. Well, I was paid. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Cormac. Thank you. Um, I'm, I've just realised we've actually run over time. It's so exciting. We've run over time a little bit. So if some of you have to skip on, don't um, don't worry. I, I won't be offended. You can skip on. But I just see this one more question in the chat here from Patricia Mariarty. Patricia, would you like to just shoot there? Wherever she is. Here. Sorry, I didn't realise you wanted me to speak. Hello, oh, yeah, everyone. No, I just... I just want to ask people that it, it seems to me that everybody is being driven online now that if you don't pivot your work online, will there in the future be some kind of punishment in that you didn't make the effort <laughs> during COVID to kind of engage? And I agree with Kim totally, like there should be the space to consider that live performance will happen again and that not everybody wants to engage in that way because that's not what their work is about. That was just my question. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. Anybody want to respond? I think uh, there's an example of that that happened. Can I, am I talking? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, please, go for it, Ken. Yeah, no, there's actually an example of that that happened up here, like uh, when the institutions up here kind of vanished when the pandemic went down and a lot of the community noticed it and went, where are they? They just abandoned us while other institutions were like making a making an effort to put stuff up online and stuff and people felt abandoned by that institution so punished yeah people felt abandoned by that because they didn't make an effort it's an mm. interesting thing um yeah 
But it, I, I wanted to talk, I thought it might be interesting to talk about the alienation that people feel when they're like doing, when they're online and communicating online and the sort of like, um, you know, the difference between live performance, I thought maybe that's interesting, the difference between live performance and how we experience, you know, video and, and uh, online stuff, you know, like we don't get to hold and touch each other anymore and all that sort of stuff. I don't know. Mm, that that's a whole people. other thing, isn't it? Mary, were you- Okay, we're not gonna do that then. Right, Well, I've kind of run over time here already. We so. have. Hey, let's talk about transhumanism. Hey, I want to talk about transhumanism. I've been reading about that, that's really cool. I'm going to mute you. <laughs> Joe will know all about them. Transhumanism, go, Joe. Lucy, <laughs> no, sorry. Finish, Lucy, excuse me, before you finish, everybody, can you do please try and join us with all this talk of online work? The reason this talk is happening is because of the National Circus Festival of Ireland. In case any of you missed it at the beginning, subscribe to our YouTube channel with permission yes. to artists. <laughs> so do please come because that's why we're here this morning because the 19th Circus Festival of Ireland. Can I'm going to leave to you my <laughs> yeah. to resume because Mary spoke a lot and Joe about context and perhaps the real answer and the top, top tip is the context. Is it right for your work to go online at this moment or what you have to say? And the actual etymology of context is con together and textere in Latin to weave. So to weave together what you want to say and how you say it, perhaps if that works for you or not. Lucy, just say, if I could, just in response to, in, in response, I, I think it's kind of in response to what everybody is saying. I think one of the things that it's, Cormac, you were saying about like, well, what do I want to get out of this? But it's also, what do the audience get out of it? And I think we're all in competition with YouTube where people are putting up their very best work that is pre-recorded. And a lot of the time, you know, it's not shot live. And uh, I suppose one of the things I've learned is that I can teach, I can teach online, I can do a performance and teach. And it's how do you actually interact with an audience? So I've been putting together, it's a, it's a, a performance online where there's interactivity, where I'm, I'm, by the way, for anybody who doesn't know, I'm a magician and a magician, sword swallower and ventriloquist. <laughs> Well, that's the kind of culmination of the show. But the, magi the magic part of it, there is a certain amount that you can actually interact with people. So I've been putting together a, 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 an interactive workshop where I actually perform for them. And then I start to teach people afterwards. And uh, I suppose it's just when you said, Cormac, about what do you get from it? It's also what did the audience get from it? Of course, you want them to, uh, you want them to appreciate your performance. But again, we're competing with YouTube. And that's the very best of people's work. And so much of it as well. I just thought that was worth pointing Thank out. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Mary, just because I, we really need to wrap up here. So Mary, did you want to say something else? And then- Thank you, Lucy. Just a, just a final one, which kind of ties in with a few questions like Patricia's question and, and maybe a slight rebuttal to Ken, because I know you were, you know, kind of enjoying the prov provocation, Ken. But I think also this make, make, make thing, um, I question it because I think, you know, it's not about just make, 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 you know, we have to really always consider what's of value and what are the artistic questions that we're asking. And sometimes we need to not not make, not make, not make, so that actually we can take time to really understand what are the relevant questions. And so we don't want to end in a situation, uh, you know, next year, post pandemic or something that there's just like, you know, we've all been, you know, instead of taking time to really take stock and reflect and like, what, you know, what, what are our practices anyway, now in this world that everybody's just kept on going, trying to make and trying to adapt and everything, you know, and I think a lot of artists are also feeling that. So sometimes Sometimes maybe artists when you say not make not make not make more research yeah so just a slight rebuttal on it Ken just for the other <laughs> side of the coin you're dead right Mary Joe did you want to say a final word you're Good muted great. she's muted <laughs> <laughs> I think Mary wrapped it up beautifully so I I I, I, I hear both sides I, I think I'd be on Mary's side though to be honest which I feel like the world is full of stuff my house is full of stuff. My head is full of stuff. I like choices. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. So yes, just to go back to what Kim was saying, we are just launching the National Circus Festival, which will be online and will be fantastic. And one of the, the fantastic things about this digital world is that it is a lot cheaper, a lot quicker and a lot easier to connect with people all across these platforms, even by virtue of the fact that there are so many of you here this morning. I think if I was holding this conversation uh, in a room somewhere, you'd have all have had to travel on a bus for four hours to get there. And don't know if so many of you would have rocked up. Um, 
So for me, this has been a revelation is trying to do these conversations in this way. And I, I do see the positivity in that. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the, the festival this weekend. Uh, the Circus Festival has a YouTube channel. Ken Fanning clearly has a YouTube channel. Carlo Arts Festival probably has a YouTube channel. <laughs> Bloody sure Mary Witcherly has. It'd be really great if you could all go and follow them and give them an old like and an old tweet. And uh, um, and I'm going to leave the final word to the Horgan himself. So, Khan. Yes. Uh, well, thanks to everybody involved. That was a really, I think, informative and really interesting talk. We could probably have done two hours. Um, but yeah, thanks to everyone who fed back into the into the comments as well. Um, just, just a last point for myself. Um, just, it's interesting when I when I was programming the circus festival for this year, it definitely helps just as a top tip or whatever for an artist. And it's more just to to um, to echo what has been said already in a way from both Mary and 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 also from Joe that if it's it's super important, I think when. I was approaching uh, artists that they have some knowledge, both kind of technically and also um, in terms of film, that they understand film and they understand the difference between live, a live show and then, and then digital art. And I found myself kind of looking towards people and, and companies and artists that had already sort of a very nice way or understanding or style um, in, in, that, in that format, in, in that digital presentation. And I mean, again, Mary said it, it's not, it's not that difficult to upskill um, in terms of editing and in terms of just learning just through YouTube about the aspects of cinematography. It's something that I personally, as an artist, am hopefully going to commit to next year. Um, and like it, the thing is it's about using the opportunities because for me it's like okay if it's something that i want to learn anyway it's something that i think is really beneficial anyway to learn and if the pandemic isn't with us next year i mean who knows what will happen but it's a skill that that i would have and i think it's a skill that's i think it's a really valuable skill because as an artist it gives you another expression it gives you another way of 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 putting your feelings and your thoughts and your fascinations out into the world and um, the Circus Festival made a film in, in September, uh, Funtus, and that was that was really a joy. Um, it was it, I was completely terrified because I know nothing about film, but we were fortunate in that we had a grant from Kerry County Council um, and the Arts Council to actually fund the making of the film. So I was able to bring in people who really did know about filming, lights, about structures, um, about storyboarding. And I had the message that I wanted to get across. I had a, a very strong viewpoint about what I wanted, a story I wanted to tell. But I was lucky because we had the money to bring in that expertise. But if I was doing it on my own, I, I don't think I would have done it because I, I just wasn't qualified to do it. And that's something that I think it's easy enough to do just to train and learn. Because as a top tip, programmers do like people who have a certain amount of expertise in this area. Yeah. Thank you, Con. And just before we go, the next uh, events that Isaacs are organizing, one is live, it's together with Waterford Spree, it's next Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's live walkabout, Waterford, Wexford, Kilkenny, and somewhere else, Neve. any advance? Um, with uh, a range of different Isaacs artists who have been working with uh, Waterford Spree. So we're very excited, looking forward to presenting that. And then the following week, we are working in partnership with the Spring Moves Dance Festival here in Wexford together with Dance Ireland. And we have put together a really tasty little program, uh, which many and many of you responded to. And we have a lovely little tasty program of dance and circus films together with uh, the wonderful Vivian Brody Hayes, who's on the line there. So she's posted the link for the, the website there with all that info as well. So, um, so those are the upcoming events. Thanks again to you all for showing up and for giving us time. Sorry we've ran over so much. I hope we haven't delayed your day, um, but it was super interesting. Thank you, massive thank you to Mary and Joe for your super honesty, freshness and directness. I love it. You really inspired me for the morning. And huge thanks, of course, to Kim and to Khan um, for hosting 
Isaacs once again and for putting together the wonderful National Circus Festival, um, all supported by the Arts Council of Ireland. So massive thanks to everybody. Enjoy the festival, folks, and we shall see you somewhere online. <laughs> Thank you. Ciao.